Hey guys, it's about Bambi TV. Guys, we're going to be reacting with Jessica. Guys, we're going to check in our 15 why did Paul change the commandment of God, birth of Christianity. How did you answer? Guys, we're going to listen to this with clear mind and give our honest answers on each of the 15 whys. Guys, let's get straight into this. Now, this is the Paul who has rewritten the life of Jesus Christ and said to us one Jesus said I came not to change and alter the law whose law the law of Moses not one jot nor one tittle till heaven and earth shall pass away no one must change or alter the law for anyone that does so is the least in the sight of God that's what Jesus said now Paul said he came with a new covenant Paul said he came with a new testament Paul said he came to the Gentiles and that they no longer had to those that followed Paul they no longer had to observe the law of Moses what was the law of Moses the Ten Commandments guys Please allow me to post in this book. I will say Jesus said he did not come to change the law of Moses. That is correct. But he said he came to fulfill it. That's what Jesus said. And he's actually correct, but I just wanted to say it because Jesus said he's here to fulfill the law. And Jesus actually fulfilled all the law. So let's continue with this. They no longer had to. They could eat pigs meat the Jewish people today following the law of Moses they can't eat pigs meat so how could Paul change that law and tell them they could eat pigs meat Paul said they didn't have to circumcise all Muslims all Jews all of those that follow the prophets are circumcised how is it that Paul said they don't have to be circumcised. Paul, guys, I saw him posting this, but like these are things I have actually looked up and I have knowledge about it, so I just have to say it. Paul didn't. Paul said you don't have to be circumcised. He did say it. They don't have to be circumcised to enter heaven. It's like if you are not circumcised, it does not mean you are less yeah, of a Christian or. Heaven. Because if you read the passage, that was the meaning of what it was telling. Like, it's trying to tell you that you don't have to be circumcised for you to enter the kingdom of God. Like, Jesus and God want everybody. It does not matter if you are circumcised or not. Yeah, you're supposed to be circumcised, but like, it isn't... Okay, for the fact that you're not circumcised, you cannot enter heaven. Yeah, that, like, that's what he was trying to explain, that that's not what it means. That you can still enter without you being circumcised. But like he's not trying to tell people don't get circumcised because I'm a Christian and I'm circumcised and I believe all my friends I know are circumcised. So I, I don't really know where the narrative is coming from that Christians are not circumcised. But I know some Christians are not circumcised. I watched the video and a Christian man said he is not circumcised. I was really, really shocked. Like that was the day I it was like an eye opening for me to find that there are Christians out there that are not circumcised. Like I believe this video helped me understand like Christianity in a further form because I feel I kind of understand Christianity in let's say my surrounding mm -hmm. like I'm trying to understand it in I'm trying to understand it globally so guys let's get back into this Paul said they didn't have to observe the Sabbath now the Sabbath is one of the commandments one of the ten commandments and Jesus said when they asked him about, Jesus said, do you know which is the greatest of all the commandments? What commandments was he talking about? He's talking about the commandments of Moses. He said, do you know which was the, is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. This is what Jesus said was the first of the commandments. Because that commandment from Moses was... Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. 
and thou shalt not worship anyone except the Lord thy God and thou shalt not bow down to any graven images in the heavens or in the earth or in the sea below for the Lord thy God is a jealous God and thou shalt not worship any gods along with him that was the first of the commandments but Paul said we didn't have to observe that commandment and it was through the epistles of Paul that Constantine later on 300 years later he decided to reconcile this new Jesus at the Council of Nicaea to be specific in the year 354 it was Constantine that reconciled Paul's Jesus from the historical Jesus and decided that he would go with Paul's Jesus and kill everybody else and that's where the Trinity was born that's where the incarnate God was born that's where the atonement was born that's where the idea of Jesus Christ being crucified dead and buried for three days and coming back was guys I don't know if you might want to leave this video now but like i'm going to say what i have researched on and let's go back to constantine like when i started 100 i actually did christianity and i actually knew the story of what happened like he said it was enforced and it was a law and that that actually got me thinking like right? because they killed people who were not open who don't want to buy christianity so like it was strange like my lecture was like when he was talking about it he kind of you can feel the emotion when mm -hmm. he was talking about it but back to this he said that um trinity was born after constantine i believe that with the evidence there i believe trinity was actually in the early church when the early church started like trinity was there and this is they are proof to this, like you can search on it. The death, resurrection, ascension of Jesus was actually there since the early church and it wasn't born during Constantine. Now, the man who said he's a Chinese man and he said a monk actually wrote something concerning the death of Jesus. And there is no way he could have knew the event. But the Holy Spirit actually inspired him to write about it. And the re the writing is actually there to date. So I think I have it on my phone. I might put it after this video yes i'll play the clip so like these are things that i believe have been there to like the evidence is there so him saying poor yes poor influenced it and what he's saying is correct but like I, i'm still saying that it wasn't just poor it was there even before poor. before poor so guys let's get back into this born this is where the idea of jesus being god was born because Constantine accepted that idea because Constantine had already deified his father as Sol Evictus and that's how December the 25th became the birthday of Jesus although Jesus could not have been born December 25th because that would have been the winter in Lebanon and anyone here that is from Lebanon will tell you September the 25th is probably snow in the ground so why would they have a baby in the manger when there's snow on the ground but that was the date of the soul evictus and that's when they changed the Sabbath from Saturday, from Yom al Sabt, Yom al Sabt. All the Arabs in this room know Yom al Sabt. The Sabbath is Saturday. So how did the day of worship for the Christians become Sunday? Because that was the day of the worshiping of the sun. And that's the day that Constantine worshiped. And that's where they took the name of Jesus and took chains of Sabbath and made it into Sunday. Guys, I've only had an issue with Christians actually worshipping on Sunday because I once asked my teacher why are we worshipping on Sunday and not on Saturday because we're doing CRX, Christian religious studies so I was like, why are we worshipping on Sunday and not Saturday? Then she was like, because the Bible actually says keep the Sabbath day holy mm -hmm. so why is it that we're worshipping on Sunday and on Saturday? I can't remember the answer she gave me but I know if it was a good answer I will remember because I don't think the answer 
really made sense. But I know that there was a lady in my class and she actually worship on Saturday. Yeah, yeah some churches worship on Saturday. So they worship on Saturday. Like they actually keep to the verse, keep the Sabbath day holy. But like I don't really know the reason why Christian why most Christians worship on Sunday. I feel in some countries they do worship on Saturdays too. And then Sunday is like a normal busy day, just like Monday, Tuesday, and yeah. the rest. But most time, majority of the let's say eighty or ninety percent worship Sunday, on Sunday, Sunday, on Sunday. And him saying about it, I feel it's because of the sun god, because I feel constantly wanted to make it easier for the people to like remove the fact that they are practicing idol worship and just feast God in there. Because on the 25th of December was either the Sun God's birthday or it was the day where they worshipped the Sun God and he was like, How are we gonna fix it? Let's just put the birth of Jesus Christ there. And we can still continue with our regular celebration. Mm-hmm. And on Sunday he just chose to put make that Sabbath day so people can keep on worshipping God instead of worshipping the sun. So I feel he tried to make it easier for them and I believe we're supposed to be were like aware of it and drift from it. For the fact we have been doing it does not mean it's right. That's something I believe in. For the fact I've been doing something does not mean it's right. For the fact we made it in norm does not mean it's right. But guys, let's get back into this. And moon day, Monday, and Tuesday, to another God, and Wednesday, another God and Thor's day, another God, and Friar's day, another God, all gods of the Romans and the Greeks. What did I have to do with Jesus Christ? Absolutely nothing. So a new covenant was born through Paul and the collaboration and the official documentation of Constantine who then assigned an official bishop of Rome. That bishop of Rome became the official pontiff of the Catholic Church. And so today, that's why the Pope is called the pontiff. He's called the shadow of God on earth. Whose shadow? Who's God? The God of Paul, the God of Constantine, certainly not the God of Jesus. Now Paul, through his writings, set up a nefarious situation that virtually stamped out, wiped out, imprisoned, tortured, killed, eliminated, all of the Unitarians, because those that follow Jesus Christ were called Unitarians. That means they were subscribing to one God. And what, were the, what happened to the Unitarians? They were thrown to the lions. They were thrown to the lions until they were gradually eliminated. Then Constantine made Christianity, the official religion. Why? Because he made a distinction between the Nazarenes and the Christians. If you were Christian, you were cool. If you were Christian, you were official. If you were Christian, you could be assimilated. If you were Christian, you were constantized. If you were acceptable, if you were embraced the Pauline doctrine, then you became a Christian. And Christian then became an antithesis of the Nazarenes. It also became an antithesis of the life and the message of the historical Jesus. This new evolution this new faith system officially adopted by Constantine the Roman Emperor the establishment of the Church of Rome 
and the subsequent Christology that has developed. I said Christology. Now what is Christology? Christology is the scientific, systematic dramatization and mythological replacement of the historical Jesus. That's what Christology is. Because if we want to love Christ and follow Christ, we have to follow the real Christ. We have to follow, find, and subscribe to the historical Christ. The issue is, who is willing to follow the historical Christ? And even after you receive the information, some of you are angry right now. If you had some rocks, you'd probably stone me right now. Some of you might want to invite me outside to beat me up. <laughs> you might want to stand up where you are and just say, you're a liar. I don't care what you say. Jesus is God. And you're going to continue saying that. Because change is difficult. Yeah, that's true. Change is actually difficult. And he said a lot of things are true, and I would say he said a lot of things are true. And I believe he didn't. He didn't say anything that is a lie, but I felt he withhold some things, like him saying he was supposed to say Jesus didn't say he came here to change the world, but to fulfill it. I felt he would hold that and made it feel like Peter and Paul changed. Yeah, everything. changed a lot. Yeah, and I feel that is the only place I kind of had issue with. But uh, most of the things he said are true. And I want to say this here, and please tell me why. Because I should watch you on Sunday. If it's my reason, what I said about Constantine trying to like remove people from idol worshiping and just fix church. Like Sunday church. Like, on is Sunday. Sunday really the Sabbath day or Saturday? Sunday is not the Sabbath it's day. It's Saturday. And it's something that everybody knows. It's Saturday. That was the day God messed up. And so could it be ignorance? It's not ignorance. I just feel people feel Sunday is the norm and they just want to follow it. But guys, tell what you think about this video. Don't you like, share, subscribe to our channel. Let us know if you can us in the comment section. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time, guys. Peace.